Okay, when it comes to aging and weathering new wood, Mother Nature is really hard to compete with, which is why I almost exclusively work with the real old barn wood. Having said that, there is times when I do need to use new wood to get things like giant 22 foot long straight beams and have them uniform enough that they all go in houses. So I've made these box beams and now I'm at that stage where I need to weather it and try and replicate what Mother Nature does over 100 years. And the best tool I've found for that is this restorer, plus a bunch of hand tools. And I've got four wheels in particular that I really like to use. First is the sander wheel, which basically turns this machine into a handheld drum sander. And I'm gonna use this to wear down these corners and make them less square. Because 100 years ago, they were either using axes or they had these old crooked sawmills and they were dragging them on and off of horse carts and across the ground. And so square beams weren't something that uh, were found very commonly back in the day. So we're gonna wear these down. So we're trying to get it worn down, but still irregular. So it's rounded off, it doesn't have a sharp edge, but it's still irregular, so, so it catches the light in different angles. Next thing I do is I use some kind of blade, whether it's an ax and I'm going for a hand-hewn type thing, I'll use a hand planer and rough it up and take some chunks out of it, or a draw bar and kind of do the same thing. But actually my favorite thing to use is a super sharp chisel. And with a sharp chisel, you can do all kinds of things to add texture and marks. You can make marks that, that um, look like saw marks you can make marks that look like axe marks and you can do the things like maybe a tractor backed into it or horse kicked it or something like that just add all kinds of irregular texture and you get kind of some of the tear out and stuff like that depending on what kind of look you're going for um, throughout the beams, depending on the age of the beam. Is it, from the, is it from the age when they used to use axes or was it the circular saws or was it the band saws? And a real nice sharp chisel can sure help with a lot of that. And then after that, Mother Nature is gonna go to town and try and wreck this wood with wind and freezing and cold and hot in the summer and the dust bowls, the dirty 30s and stuff like that. And it's survival of the fittest. So during the Dust Bowl, the Dirty 30s, all that dust was coming across the prairies and blowing into the fences and buildings and stuff like that. And this wood is made up of hard fibers from the winter and soft fibers from the summer. And in a game of survival of the fittest, the soft fibers get torn out and blown across the country and the hard fibers stay. Now I'm grabbing this wire wheel brush, which is the most abrasive, and it's gonna go and go over this wood and tear out a lot of the soft fibers and replicate the wind storms and, and the heat and the cold. All the grief that Mother Nature puts wood through and why it gets such cool character. And now you can see here, that's just gone down and torn out all the soft fibers and made a lot of these ridges and stuff like that and given the wood a whole lot more texture. After that, and depending on the type of finish I'm going for, I will use one or two of these two. You can use the nylon brush wheel which goes down and softens up the, the rougher marks that you made with the wire brush right now. So just sort of the wind storms over the years and stuff like that. Or you use the flapper wheel and it'll kind of get down in the grooves as well, but it'll also knock the top off and give it more of a rubbed look. So where these beams may have been in a situation where they were used and, and people or animals were rubbing against them and stuff like that, then you need to sort of replicate that rubbed look. And both of these do that. For these ones, I'm just gonna to go to the flapper wheel and it's gonna come down and sand off smooth the higher parts of each one of these ridges and also kind of get down and sand into each one of these grooves. And then I also get a much more uniform stain application. As you know, with a lot of this wood, when you expose just the soft fibers and tear it up, it soaks up stain at a, at a way different rate. So I'm trying to get an ununiform surface across this 22 foot straight beam, but at the same time have it uniform enough that it accepts stain at a uniform rate. Here, and now we've got kind of a smooth, but rough and textured, that sounds kind of like an oxymoron and maybe it's kind of hard to tell, but a smooth, but rough, a smooth feeling, but ununiform and rough and aged look that'll, that'll accept stain at a uniform rate. And up until now, all the stuff that I've done is simply to add the right texture and the right angles and the right ways that the light can catch the wood and stuff like that. Next is the coloring and the staining and the sanding and the layers that I do to try to get the right colors. And that's a bit of a different story and really is conditional upon the results that I'm going for. Rarely is it a one stage application. Usually it's two or three different things that I do to get the variations of colors that I see that come from the wood and from the interaction of the wood from the sun and, and mother nature. 
Like I say, Mother Nature is hard to compete with, which is why I mostly just use the, the real stuff because uh, she's so hard to replicate.